Hey, Lidzel, welcome. You learned you can't wing it. Um, it uh, well, it takes a little while to learn that. Um, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. Yes, how, how'd your stream go? Fortunately, I wasn't able to stay for too long. I was, um, I was having lunch um, and prepping for this when I stopped by. But uh, what do you mean by not being able to wing it? Um, oh, so I think with streaming, you just have to be okay with making mistakes um, on a regular basis and being open with that. for the better people watched it um <laughs> yeah well I've, I've made don't worry I've made a lot of mistakes here I've actually screwed up the game quite a bit on the stream before so let's move this away um F kids hello by the way um yeah but um doesn't mean you put it all on YouTube if you really messed up. Yes. Hey, major idea. Hello. Uh, beep to bleep. F kids. Welcome everybody. Yes. It is. It takes um. It takes a little while to get used to that. You just have to learn to to laugh it off. Um. Let me adjust my camera exposure. There we go. Alright. Uh, broke a bunch of stuff and couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And then you fix it within a few minutes of stop. Yep. That's, um... That's just nerves. Um... Yeah, that's, that's happened. That, that's happened to me before. Okay, so what are we doing today? Oh, one thing I wanted to talk about is, um, I mean, you know, one, Lidzel, one thing you can do is start not, um, you start with streaming stuff that you know you're more comfortable with and kind of just do that. But, but eventually you will find that it's easier to kind of work on whatever as it comes up and you just have to sort of play it by ear. And uh, major idea. I'm glad you're you started messing with shaders. Yes, this is the welcome to the dark side. Um, streaming after not touching your code for over a month and throwing a massive refactor five hours. Um, yeah, that might not be the ideal time, but um, but you can as long as you talk about what what's going on. I think that's okay. Um, cool. Are you doing uh, post processing stuff? Um, or on the material. So this is kind of something I wanted to talk about, which is um, I was putting together this list of images yesterday um, for self-sabotage. Don't worry, that's happened to me before. I just I just keep everything transparent now. I've got no shame. But um, I started Kill Screen Festival. So I'm speaking at Kill Screen Festival next month, at the beginning of next month, and um, they wanted me to send them over some pictures, kind of like before and after. It's very, very straightforward um, and very powerful. On YouTube has helped because I can go back on the video and see something it did. Yes, that's the other thing. Let's check it out. Let's take a look at what Major Ideas got. Okay. Oh, so you're doing a screen space? Oh, neat. Yes. Are you... Which one is the... What's the shader that we're looking at here? Um... 
Anyway, the uh, just light and color attenuate. Um. Anyway, the uh, just light and color attenuation. Okay. Yes. So, one of the yeah yeah yeah. I think shaders are especially post processing shaders. They're what I they I call them the indie secret weapon. Because that's how, by focusing on shaders, you can sort of get away with a lot of very simple geometry and have a really good art style. Anyway, Killscreen Festival asked for some pictures of the game before and after for comparison. And uh, I started kind of putting together these, this collection of images all the way back from November 2012. And I thought I would, it was kind of a trip down memory lane. And I thought, you know, I'd spend a bit of the beginning of this stream talking about kind of what I was thinking throughout all these. Um, hey, Codename Selection. Hello. Welcome. Um, yes, yes. You'll, you'll find later on you can sort of like not get stressed out when things go wrong and see the streaming for what it is. Um, so, yeah, the, you can tell these were early ones. It was like my first attempt playing with Unity, kind of throwing textures together. A lot of stuff off the asset store. Do I have any old builds? I have all the old builds. Yes, except for this, this, these ones from twenty, late twenty thirteen. I was working on a MacBook Air at the time, so they are only available for, um, for Mac. But uh, I do still have them, and I might. Uh, I think closer to launch, I like to do like a twelve hour marathon stream where I play through all the old builds and have some. You know different guests who played them come on and talk a bit about what they thought of the game at first and how it changed so on and so forth um so you can see at the time you had this you would like click on the mouse and then move it left or right or up down left up or down left or right to choose which direction you rotated so you could choose you could like rotate left and I've, eventually i decided to get rid of that and just have it like whatever your surface you're looking at you rotate this was way too complicated that way but yeah like look at this this doesn't make any fucking sense there's like this brick pattern and then these tiles all over and it's like why um I remember I wasted a lot of time looking at uh, looking for textures and uh, that was um, figuring this out was it was a uh, when I realized I shouldn't be wasting time on that that was a really important lesson um, yeah and I had these crate boxes it was just kind of random textures that I found whatever was available Windows 95 screensaver which one? Um, so in this version of the game, what you were doing was you were rotating the environment and not the player. So right now the player changes and the environment stays still, but back then it was the environment that rotated. But what that meant was if you had boxes in the room, like all of them as soon as after the first rotation they'd all end up in the bottom right corner and you wouldn't really be able to do anything with them so it was just like a huge mess all right so currently rotating you can see that at the top anyway i had these sort of these were the it's actually kind of funny because we've been working on these like giant tetromino blocks but these were sort of the initial inspiration for that so you can see i actually had them all the way back in um oh the labyrinth um Oh, this one? Um, but yeah, you can see I had these sort of large pieces that you couldn't pick up, but you could move around. And at the time, they weren't being falling according to gravity. You had to, like, drag them across. Um, it wasn't clear whether... See, this one is selected, which is slightly green, but most of them you couldn't... It was, like, really hard to tell what was interactable and what wasn't. But yeah, it's kind of funny how... I'm sort of just realizing that this is, this is how it has come back around. Um, and then what happened was at some point, yes, yeah, it was very much a portal clone. And what happened was at some point I decided I would um, 
get rid of that, I would start. So this I, I play tested it and it was a disaster after working on it for about four months. And I started from scratch again. And this is where I started to have objects. Hey, Flint Steel, welcome back. Hello. Which is kind of, I had to collect a bunch of images to send to Kill Screen for the Kill Screen Festival. And uh, it was kind of a trip down memory lane. And so I thought I, you know, I thought I talked a bit about it at the beginning of the stream. But this is when I rewrote the game. So in this one, you're changing the environment. Here, what you are is you're, the player is changing. You can see I started to have objects that would only be available to pick up depending on your gravity. So like these ones are inactive. So the, these ones like you could not, they, this all had physics at the time. And so like right now your red is active and then blue is active and that might have been red or something, but they're frozen. You can see I had like spheres that could roll around. Um, and uh, slowly, right, recognizing, okay, let's just stick with boxes because spheres cause too many problems. Um, lighting up the floor. Originally, somebody wanted all the walls to light up, and it just didn't look. It was like it looked like Easter, so I just light up the floor to show you. That way, it was down. You can see this was before I was using Pro Builder, so I was constantly getting um, like none of the objects were lining up correctly. As you can see, there's a lot of like Z fighting. Right, so starting to move from the buttons to these uh, color specific um, lines. And you can see even at this point, I think I had double gravity boxes um, starting to add light to the level. You can see this is where I'm starting to play with more interesting architecture. Um, so I still didn't really know what I was doing and I remember this was an interesting level because this was before I had the world wrapping set up. And this was what it, I had this for a transition level. So you'd solve a bunch of errors and then you'd go through this one. What I wanted was this like, what I wanted the player to feel like they were falling infant, like endlessly. Like this was an endless, uh, a bottomless pit. So in order to do that, I didn't want the player to touch the wall. Hey, jet user, hello. Um, so what I did was I put this electricity, so if you touch the wall, you died, so you had to fall down. Um, but it's kind of, it didn't work out well, um, but they, but it was interesting because it led to, it sort of, it's sort of interesting because this, the core idea of the player falling endlessly works out so much better now with the world wrapping system, and it's so much more beautiful and conceptually clean, but it, it's sort of funny how like the core, the, the sort of the, the feeling that I wanted to achieve, that was there in July, 2013. It just, it just this was the first attempt at it. And you can see it's like very, not very elegant. Um, and it caused a lot, like people were like, how long am I falling for? What, what What's like, how long is this gonna take? So that was, anyway, it's sort of very interesting, but. You can see I had it running at 60 frames per second back then. And again, sort of ways of, this eventually became the laser beams, that this was sort of a way of getting the players to see that they, um, they've they completed a section. Um, started writing an in-game key rebind. Yes, yes, that is a good idea. Players do want that. That stuff is very, very helpful. Um, So, um, and we're just kind of going down. I had to put together some old screenshots of Manifold Garden to send to skill Kill Screen, and I thought I'd just take the beginning of the stream to talk about them. And again, this is very interesting, right? This is a, a level full of these lattices, and again, this was before the world wrapping, so it just ended up being this big level that wasn't fun to play because you were constantly getting lost, and there was no way, no way to reference yourself. No, uh, there was no, like reference points anywhere. Yeah, especially like left-handed people, they don't want to use WSD, right? They want to use the arrow keys. Um, 
yeah, you can still see here we're going with the... I guess I must have brought the buttons back. Oh no, I think the white, the button meant that you can use any box there. Um, hey, Bashi CS, welcome. Uh, I think that is uh, your new... Hey, that's a very... Oh man, you know what? Be to believe the asset store links always break. Oh, are you Lidzel? Are you left-handed? Um, but Bashi CS, are you... Um, I think that's a, this is the first time I'm seeing you here, maybe? Your name sounds familiar, but um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Um, Ezio, write one for graphics and sound if I can manage to find sound clips that work well. Um, so, yeah, so then this is the, the one of the early levels starting to get outside okay well wonderful thanks for um thanks for speaking up by the way if there are other people lurking feel free to say hi introduce yourself tell us tell us why you're here what you do um playing with a different reticle we're just taking the beginning of the stream to kind of talk about some old versions of the game and design choices hey scientist hello welcome um yeah yeah, okay, you can see at this point I started to play with Pro Builder. That was, yeah, it was uh, about August 2013. It was the summer. Oh, I see. It's fairly handy. Um, this puzzle is actually in the current one again. I, I really like this puzzle, again, from August 2013, and it's still in the game. Um, these will work their way back somehow not quite like this but they are there these are sort of like attempts at making weird art installation things hey gary joe hansen welcome to the stream so thank you are new here um yeah we're just kind of looking at some you know old versions for for a little while this is starting to focus on outdoor sections um, starting to get more complex in the in the architecture. That's when wool wrapping was added, the edge detection, kind of pushing that. 